Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Macy's. Macy's doing something. She's giving me sign language. I don't understand sign language. Well, anybody knows me, knows me. I don't like to talk in front of a bunch of people. I could talk to the president one-on-one -on -one and talk all day long. But I don't like to talk. But anyway, uh, Carol, um, Carl asked me to, uh, to help with the alabaster. And so I gladly said, yes, I will. Well, when I first came to the Nazarene Church, I didn't know what an alabaster offering was. Does anybody here know why we do it? What it symbolizes, nobody knows. <laughs> well, I don't feel so dumb anymore. <laughs> okay, it symbolizes the greatest love story to me in the Bible. It's when Mary, and I don't know if it was Mary Magdalene or Mary, the um, sister of Lazarus. I don't know which. I don't think it tells it. But she, she uh, had an ornament, and she had it in an alabaster bottle. And this ornament she had was very expensive, and they said it was probably a year's worth uh, value. And she poured it on Jesus' head, and it went down all over his body, down to his feet. And then she unveiled her, her veil, which was uh, said for back in the day, and dropped her hair down and dried his feet with her hair. To me, that was one of the greatest love stories ever. So this is called um, a tribute to that. So we do it twice a year in the Nazarene Church in um, September and February. And uh, all of the money goes for buildings, and it was uh, originated in the MNI Nazarene in 1949. Okay. It's, it's a year after this born. <laughs> That's a long time ago. And they've been doing it ever since. It's a very a big tradition in the Nazarene church. And um, since 1949, 6,000 buildings have been be built with um, change little bills and stuff it's never been a huge asking of money so uh next uh sunday is going to be our march and kind of reminded everybody of it thank you thank you macy i'm so thankful for all of our uh our nmi council who's uh, stepped up and in, in helping out with our, our missions thank you all for what you do and you did great macy thank you uh, I want to say a great shout out to our teens this morning for their pancake breakfast. Let's give them a hand. They did a good job for that. Thank you guys for supporting them. Uh, we are having a church board meeting today at 5 p.m. Life Group 2 will be dismissed this evening. Uh, September crisis care kit item is, of course, uh, is our shampoo. Uh, I've had some folks bring some in. I'm sorry the basket wasn't out there this morning, but it will be out there next Sunday. Uh, we're looking, trying to get 36 uh, shampoos this month, so if you're at the dollar store wherever and you happen to go by that hour, just grab one for us, or two, or 36. It depends on what the Lord lays on your heart. <laughs> uh, Life Group 1, the Daniel Dilemma, will meet next Sunday at September 18th following the, uh, the worship service. And Life Group 2, reading through the Bible, will be dismissed this evening for the board meeting. Uh, Wednesday evening service is 7 p.m. for our children's, teens, and adults, and Life Covering meets every Thursday at 7 p.m., multi-generational Sunday school class. It meets every, uh, every Sunday in the children's department at 9 a.m. That's for anybody who would like to attend. doesn't matter what your age group is. And Amanda's doing a great job with that. She, she's made it in a way that can, can speak to the, the teens, the kids, and the adults that are coming, and it's interactive, and it's been really, really well. So I encourage you, if you don't have a Sunday school class that you're attending, it would be a good one for you to come to. Prayer and fasting in September. Uh, this month, we've entered into a time of prayer and fasting with all the churches in the southern districts. It doesn't matter what you're fasting. You can pick whatever it is you want to fast. I'm, uh, I, was, I was fasting caffeine, but then I thought, you know what? It's more effective if I fast sleep, so I'm getting up earlier in the morning because I'll tell you what, the Lord's really been moving in that prayer time, 
And uh, it, I'm hoping I can keep it past this month. You know what I mean? So because the Lord's really been speaking on my heart. So uh, whatever that may be. Um, but then it's going to accumulate to or culminate into a refill service on Sunday evening, September 25th at the Forge, um, previously Little Rock First Church. So it's going to be a, a pretty powerful service. I can imagine how the Lord's going to move there. Happy Grandparents Day, folks. To all you great, not well, you may be great grandparents, but you, I was going to say great because you're great and then grandparents. But, or great grandparents, first time grandparents, all of you, happy Grandparents Day. Um, Amanda has set up like a little uh, um, back backdrop out there in the activity between the activity building and the foyer. You can get your picture taken. She also has a little gifts for you in the activity building. So we love you guys and what you mean to us and the examples that you set for all of us. So and the sacrifices that you make for us. Sometimes you guys are, are the unsung warriors, and uh, we love you guys and thank you so much. And I think that's oh, I always forget this. Today is September 11th. And we know we all know what that means, and uh, how that day totally changed all of our lives in a way, and especially for those who were directly involved. Um, so just take a moment to to recognize that and what that means, and the sacrifice that was made for that, and everything that happened afterwards because of that. And if you won't mind, let me let me pray for us this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for this nation. We thank you for the people of this nation. We thank you for this opportunity to live in a world and in, in, in a country that we we have freedoms to to worship the way we want to worship, Lord, to 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 be able to come out and speak freely about you, and, and in some nations that's not even allowed. But Heavenly Father, September 11th was a terrible day that that us as the United States will never forget, and uh, I, I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would be with those that were directly involved, those who lost loved ones because of the events. And also our service member, men and women who lost lives because of the events as well and decisions made afterwards. But I pray, Heavenly Father, you be with our nation as we remember uh, this time. Help us not to forget what it means. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that your hand will be upon our nation, Lord, that you would just, uh, your people would turn to you and uh, see you for who you are and uh, not be confused or disguised or um, covered up by the things of this world, but really, truly see you for who you are, Lord, because we need you. This country cannot survive, Lord, without you. And we love you, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I love you guys. I hope you have a great week, and I'm going to turn over to Trey for the music. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Carl. Good morning, Spring Lake. If you will, please stand with me as we worship this morning. Fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all thy guilty stains, and lose all thy guilty stains, lose all thy guilty. Wash all my sins away, wash all my sins away, and then may I go on as he wash all my sins away.
yourself Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes of your life was born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Sing, O oh, what I say, Lord, is any wonderful? Sing, Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Died for me, 
Thy praise shall never, never fail throughout eternity. Sing one more. Your love never fails. Nothing can separate Even if I run away Your love never fails I know I still make mistakes But you have new mercies for me every day Cause your love never fails Stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me your love never fails. The strong and the waters are steep, but I'm not alone here in these open seas. Cause your love never fails. The chasm is far too wide. I never thought I'd reach the other side. Your love never fails. Oh, no. You stay the same. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me, your love never fails You stay the same through the ages, your love never changes There may be pain in the night but joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me Your love never fails And you may be seated Thank you, Trey. Good to see everyone this morning. I was going to uh, mention September 11th, but Carl did that so well already. But we do, we all have memories of that day and uh, the import that it had upon our nation uh, and uh, how it struck us that day to know that our innocence uh, lost is, was very powerful for our nation. And um, the unity that came upon our nation at that time was very beautiful to see. And we want to pray for that to return again. I do want to share with you, we are in the midst of prayer and fasting month. And uh, I hope that you are joining in some way with us as we go through this. In the foyer, I believe in this so much that last Wednesday I printed off a prayer guide for, and we began to go through that. Uh, many people come to me and they ask, um, 
and just say, I, I struggle with prayer. And uh, can, you, can you give me some prayers to pray? Or can you give me an idea how to pray? Because to be honest, a lot of disciples of Christ do not read the Bible and pray. And yet that's the key to our life. That's a sustenance to our life. So in the foyer, if you're unable to be with us on Wednesdays, you'll see a, a prayer guide that I printed up. And I, I hope that you will take that. There are three guides to prayer. Just choose one and use it. And uh, there's also prayers that you can pray and uh, ways to pray for those that are lost, that you want to come to Christ. So I, I hope you'll pick up one of those prayer guides and, and use it, put it to use. And I'll tell you, whenever you start prayer and fasting, it's interesting We'd think that we'd see results of our prayers right away, wouldn't we? But, but I want to remind you, spiritual warfare is very, very real. And I've learned in my times of prayer and fasting that when I really dedicate that time of fasting, uh, the, the results do not always come right away. And the reason is because there is warfare taking place. And the beauty of that time of prayer is that God lifts you up above it and empowers you. And our churches, we're praying not only for our church, but all the churches on the district. And I'm praying for those in our community for God to move. And uh, so I, I pray, please pick one of those up and put it to use. Now, if you have a prayer life that is established, please just stay with what you're doing. But if you're you're really wanting to establish a prayer life, I encourage you to pick that up if you would. Well, this morning we get a special privilege to bring another member into our church. And Carol has been talking about this for some time and we're going to make it official today. Carol, if you would come forward. We're so glad to bring you into church membership today. Dearly beloved, the privileges and blessings that we have in association together in the church of Jesus Christ are very sacred and precious. There is in it such hallowed fellowship as cannot otherwise be known. There is such helpfulness with brotherly watch and care and counsel as can only be found in the church. There is the godly care of pastors with the teachings of the word and the helpful inspiration of corporate worship, and there is cooperation and service accomplishing that which cannot otherwise be done. The doctrines upon which the church rests as essential to Christian experience are brief. We believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We especially emphasize the deity of Jesus Christ and the personality of the Holy Spirit. We believe that human beings are born in sin, that they need the work of forgiveness through Christ and the new birth by the Holy Spirit, that subsequent to this there is the deeper work of heart cleansing or entire sanctification through the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and to each of these works of grace the Holy Spirit gives witness. We believe that our Lord will return, the dead shall be raised, and that all shall come to final judgments with its rewards and punishments. Do you heartily believe these truths? If so, answer, I do. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And do you realize that he saves you now? If so, answer, I do. Desiring to unite with the Church of the Nazarene, do you covenant to give yourself to the fellowship and work of God in connection with it? Will you endeavor in every way to glorify God by a humble walk? godly conversation, and holy service by devotedly giving of your means, by faithful attendance upon the means of grace, and abstaining from all evil will you seek earnestly to perfect holiness of heart and life in the fear of the Lord. If so, answer, I will. Okay. Well, we want to welcome you into our church at Sacred Fellowship. And along with it, 
Uh, we, we are so glad to have you be part of our faithfulness and our church family as we work to, to uh, journey together in Christ and reach others for Christ. Is there something you'd like to share with the congregation, Carol? Amen. I've prayed about this for a long time, and I have a marvelous companion back there, <laughs> and I want to be with her, and I want to uh, feel a part of this church, and I do, and that's just my sincere prayer, mm. and I just, I know y'all have all been a blessing to me already. And I just pray that I can be a blessing to you. Amen. That's my prayer. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful. We're glad to have you become part of our church family. Make sure and welcome Carol at the end of the service and God be with you. Let's say a prayer. Lord, we thank you for Carol. We just pray that you would... Uh, just welcome him into our church family. And Lord, thank you for the love and the grace he has for you. And, uh, and God, we just pray, bless him and Macy in many ways through your love. Amen. Amen. There's a... What does it mean to be a church member? I think that's really important for us to consider. I, I, in fact, I, I'd rather rephrase that question. What does it mean to be part of the body of Christ? And I, I, I believe that's a, a question that is going to be answered very clearly in the message this morning as we deal with faithfulness. Faithfulness is a key part of what it means to, to be part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ depends on each member to be faithful. And where faithfulness is lacking, the body struggles. One of the things I'm praying for this month is revival in our midst, a renewal of the heart for faithfulness within God's people. Uh, there are many things that are warring against that today. In our congregation alone, we've, we've seen sickness come upon many. We've had loss, and that affects our church family. It sure does, but, you know, we can rejoice that we know those that have gone ahead have made it to their destination. And that's where we want to be. Uh, we, we have families that are going through difficult circumstances. And uh, each circumstance is different, but in those circumstances, I think it's important that the faithfulness of God's people is what assists in bringing people through. And I encourage, I want to thank those that are listening on Facebook. I encourage you, if you're listening to our services, it's wonderful to listen to the gospel, but to become part of a church family that is, we'd love to have you visit with us. And then, of course, we welcome those that you're not able to get out and worship. And we're glad you're worshiping with us. You know, there's many things in life we can call faithful. The, faith, the, the sun is faithful to rise every morning and to set every night. The tide's faithful to come in. And go out. The government is faithful to tax and spend. <laughs> but there's one thing that is more faithful than all these other things put together. And that is the love of God. I want you to stand with me as we begin with looking at a passage of scripture. It comes from Lamentations 3. Lamentations 3 beginning with verse 22. And there we read this wonderful passage of scripture. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 
Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. And Lord, I pray that you would encourage hearts this morning, that you would move us as a church and a people to realize, Lord, uh, what blessings come from faithfulness to you. In your name we pray, amen. I'm so thankful for God's faithfulness. Every time we see a rainbow, Carrie and I saw a double rainbow this week. It was so beautiful to see out there. And every time we see a rainbow, we're, rem we're reminded that God is faithful. That is God's message to us. I am faithful to you. I am up here. And he keeps his promises. Every time we pick up a Bible, we're reminded that Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Every time we gather to worship, we are reminded that Jesus said, where two or three people gather together in my name, there I am with them. And every time we take communion, we're reminded that Jesus said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. The songwriter said it best, I think, in that wonderful hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me. You know, I wished I could sing that <laughs> and do some justice to it. But even though I, I can't sing it, I can still pro proclaim that God is faithful. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And our faithfulness today works towards the faithfulness of the generations that come behind us. I hope you're thankful for God's faithfulness. And as we grow in Christ, as we allow the Holy Spirit to transform our lives, God takes his faithfulness and he pours it into us so that we in turn bear the fruit of faithfulness. Now this fruit is not the spiritual gift of faith. Faith is different than faithfulness. The gift of faith and, and the faith that saves is belief in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation. The spiritual fruit of faithfulness is a real and evident act that takes place in our life in worship to God. And I want us to look at a passage of Scripture uh, several, but I want to begin with Galatians 5, 22 and 23. This has been our key mark passage as we're going through the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, let's read this together again. We've been doing this through this series, but let's read this together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Well, today we're on faithfulness. You know, Solomon asked a, a great question in Proverbs 21, or 26, and I, I want us to consider it this morning, and here's the question. He said, many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. In Matthew 25, Jesus told a parable. And from that parable, we find three great truths about God and the spiritual fruit of faithfulness. I pray God will use this parable to really speak to us today. I think if there's a message that needs to be shared with the church worldwide, it would be on faithfulness. And the first truth that we're going to take from this parable that we're going to look at this morning is that faithfulness tells, God how, tells us how God regards responsibility. 
So let's look at this parable, Matthew 25, beginning with verse 14. And there it says this, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Now, a talent was equivalent to one day's wage. And in this parable, the the master represents God. The servants represent us as God's children. And the talents represent the different areas of responsibility that God gives each person. You notice that the, the talents were given specifically from the master to the servant, so that would be from God to us. Now, verse 15 tells us that each servant was given talents according to their own ability. And, and that each servant was given at least one talent. There was not one servant that was not given a talent. The, at least one servant had one talent. And that tells us that every servant of God is a steward. And in the parable, we are told that not every servant had equal ability, but each carried equal responsibility to see that the ability they were given was used. And that means that being faithful is to be diligent in using the talent God has given us. You know, I think all of us have seen this and maybe we've been guilty of it, but it's frustrating in our society today to see many content just to get by. Very few people give their best and this is reflected in the products we buy every day now. Some... (laughs) that only lasts for a couple of weeks and then stops working. It's evident by the customer service we so often receive today. In fact, have you ever heard the term quiet quitting? Quiet quitting? According to Gallup poll, at least 50% of the American workforce is quiet quitting on the job. And simply what they're doing is they're just doing enough to keep the job. And that's all. Only 32% of people today say that they actually are engaged in the work they are doing. I don't know, Sean. I I hope you're engaged when you're driving that plane up there. (laughs) I hope we're all engaged in what we're doing. But you know, that just might get my attitude. That quiet quitting is not just affecting the the work world. It has come into the church, and the church is struggling today because of it. Um, Insight Magazine did an interesting article that brought out the great cost that comes about if we're content to just get by. And the article said this, and it said that if 99.9% is good enough, then 103,000 income tax returns will be processed incorrectly this year. 22,000 checks will be deducted from a wrong bank account in the next 60 minutes. 1,314 phone calls will be misrouted every minute. 12 babies will be given to the wrong parents each day. 18,322 pieces of mail will be mishandled in the next hour. 291 pacemaker operations will be performed incorrectly. 880,000 credit cards in circulation will turn out to have incorrect 
cardholder information. 20,000 incorrect drug, drug prescrip prescriptions will be written. And 107 incorrect medical procedures will be performed by the end of the day today. And that's just if 99.9% .9 is, is uh, practiced. And we know 99.9% .9 is not being practiced in most jobs today or in most churches. If this would be the result of the daily work world, one has to ask, what is the cost if we're not faithful in our Christian life? The fruit of faithfulness means that we are faithful to the task that God has given us to do. So faithfulness, first of all, we learn from this parable, it tells us how God regards responsibility. First, he doesn't give us to, uh, things to be responsible for that we're not able to do, and then he takes that responsibility, very, he considers it most important. The next thing that we learn from this parable is that faithfulness tells us that God does require accountability. Let's go on with the parable, verse 16. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Now the master of the parable returns. And we're simply told in verse 19 that he came to settle accounts with them. Now to settle accounts means that the master called each one forward. And they had to share what they had done with the talents that they had been given. Now, when I was young, and, and I was a child, and I heard the pastor speak on this, I have to admit, this, this verse really made me uncomfortable. One was because I, call, I thought of it literally. And, and I thought that God was going to give me so much money, and I was supposed to go out there and double it. <laughs> and... And I thought, is that fair, God? What if I don't know how to d double my money? But what a relief it was when I realized that I had it all wrong, that God only gives us tasks that we are able to do. This is why Jesus says that the master gave the talents according to ability. Each servant was only given what they were able to to do. So if the talent was not used or doubled, it was because of lack of effort, not lack of ability. And this is why Jesus said the master required accountability for what the servants had done with the talents. Now as we consider this portion of the parable, it's apparent that that uh, because of this, each person is given different talents. But there are areas of faithfulness in the Christian life that all of us are accountable for because Scripture tells us we are. And I wanted to look at a few of the things. The, the Bible tells us God calls all of us as believers to be faithful with. Uh, first of all, we're to be faithful in our work. I kind of addressed that already. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. And that means that as Christians, we represent Christ. And we need to do our best on the job because we are representing God. And anything less is a, a, a bad witness for the Lord. It's a, a bad thing to have someone say they're a Christian and just sit around on the job. Secondly, we are to be faithful with 
our wealth. No matter if you're rich or poor or in between, Jesus said in Luke 16, 11, and if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? You know, generous people are often thought to be rich, but I've discovered the opposite. Some of the most generous people I know are not rich. They simply have a giving spirit. God's word tells us that those who sow generously will reap generously, and I believe that. And I personally believe we see the results here on earth, but we will see the results far more in heaven. That's why the Bible speaks about tithing, the importance of it. And in the New Testament, it speaks of giving generously with a glad heart. I just want to take a moment and share with you that giving to our church during COVID was amazing. It was very generous. Uh, But since we, especially these last summer months, we've had several months of missing our budget by $3,000 to $4,000. And uh, it doesn't take too many of those kinds of months for a church to uh, find itself in financial difficulty. So God has supplied the need over all the years Spring Lake has existed. And he will continue as long as we are faithful. I urge you to be faithful in giving and not just to the church. Have a generous spirit towards others. And know that as you do, you will be blessed and rewarded, especially in heaven, for your your generosity. Thirdly, we're to be faithful in worship. Hebrews 10.25 says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhort one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching, I I think that verse is so appropriate to the day because isn't it odd as as so many people believe we're living in end times and yet church attendance is struggling and you would think it would be the opposite. We need God more than ever as we live in these times that we're living in and worship is your powerful source of refilling each week. Uh, I can't imagine... Uh, going for a period of time without this refilling by the Holy Spirit in worship. I read recently how a pastor dedicated a book to his people, and this is what he wrote. I dedicate this book with gratitude to the faithful church member, that wonderful person whose praises go so largely unsung, but without whose regular attendance, constant dependability, faithful intercession, lasting affection, and unstinted generosity in the giving of time, money, and strength, the work of the pastor would not be possible. And I say amen to that. And uh, we have many here that fit exactly who he's talking about. And we need so many more. I urge you, be faithful. I'd ask you a question. Do you apply the same standards of faithfulness to your Christian life and responsibilities that you expect from other areas of your life? If your car starts once every three times, is it reliable? If you don't go to work once or twice a month, Are you a loyal employee? If your refrigerator stops working for a day or two now and then, do you say, oh, well, it it works most of the time? If your water heater provides an icy cold shower now and then, is it dependable? If you miss a couple of loan payments every year, does the bank say 10 out of 12 is okay? If your spouse 
only talk to you once or twice a week, would you say that you have a relationship? And if you fail to worship God one or two Sundays a month, would you expect to be called faithful? If we're not faithful in a wor worship, it's, it's amazing how the tree dries up and there is no fruit. Worship is key to our spiritual life. We're to be faithful in our word. Proverbs 12, 2 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. Uh, you know, we're, we're no better than our word. And, and I believe that a handshake should be just as binding as the ink on any contract. And if you make an agreement, be the Christian that follows through. We've probably all had people agree to something through a handshake and then fail to follow through. I, I've been through those experiences a couple of times and I know that I never want to live that way. I've known individuals to make sizable pledges from time to time, only to back out on their word. In many cases, others stepped up to meet the need, but how sad for the person that failed to keep their word. What about making a pledge to do a ministry, but then not following through or, or stop doing it? We dare not represent Christ and be unfaithful to our word. And then we are to be faithful in our witness. In Revelations 1.5, Jesus Christ is called the faithful witness. We are to be faithful in sharing Jesus with others. And our life must be faithful to such a witness. Um, just this Past week, somebody was talking to me about someone that would go to church every Sunday, and they, they were not from this church. <laughs> but then they went to work, and they were, um, we'll just say, did not represent Christ at all. Uh, we are to be faithful in our witness in word and deed. Well, faithfulness tells how God regards responsibility. Faithfulness tells how God requires accountability. And thirdly, in this parable, we are told that faithfulness tells us how God regards dependability. Now, for the first two servants, it's good news. And beginning in verse 20, it says this. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. And his Lord said to them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Do you see how even though one person had more talents than the other, they each were rewarded the same. Uh, and in verse 21 and 23, the, the master says to both these servants, you were faithful with only a few things. Now I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. What wonderful words. And as we look at this, I just remind you that someday we too 
will stand before God. And as these stewards had to give account of their use of their talents, their faithfulness, we will as well. And I pray that each one of us will hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Some people say, if I just had a million dollars, oh, the things I would do for God. The fact is, they will do the same thing with a million that they would do with a hundred. And that's what God was saying here. Jesus himself in Luke 16.10 said, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with very much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with very much. Please do not think it is, it is not important to be faithful in little things. Because notice what happens to the unfaithful servant. We, we continue in verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, said, Lord, I knew you would be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. Now, now Jesus is referring to the end time judgment of believers here. This is not the judgment between whether we are, are Christian or sinner. This is the judgment of believers according to their faithfulness. Uh, he says, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance but for him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And what we see here is this servant not only used the talent they had been given, but through their unfaithfulness, they lost their relationship with Christ as well. If we do not use our gifts here on earth, we will not have the opportunity to use our gifts in heaven. And uh, I don't know about you, but the one thing I pray I will hear from the Lord Jesus Christ is the words, well done, good and faithful servant. There will be no higher compliment or greater reward than simply hearing Jesus say, well done. John, if you would uh, begin the music for us, please. I, I think this speaks to the heart and soul of the church today, and not just in our nation, but around the world. Uh, the key to the life of a church is the church family. The key to seeing that church family thrive is the faithfulness of the people to the responsibilities and talents God has given. And uh, I pray that we as God's church will be faithful beyond measure to what he has called us to be. Let us stand at this time. We're going to take just a few moments. There, may, there are many issues taking place in people's lives, and we want to take time to pray. And perhaps you have been moved by God during this message, and you feel a need to come and pray. I invite you to do so. Uh, we, we're going to anoint Brenda McGinley. She's having cataract surgery Tuesday. We do want to pray that 
goes very well. And uh, Jack Stevenson's going to have another chemo treatment this week. We, we want to remember him as well. Lord, as we come to you this evening, we want to be faithful servants to you. We want to hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant, when we stand before you. And God, we know that uh, you always take us where we are, and you always forgive, and you give us opportunity to keep living for you. We thank you that you do Forgive as far as the east is from the west. We pray for faithfulness, Lord. We pray for faithfulness in the lives of our church body, in all the areas that we mention and many more. And God, each person has different gifts, talents, abilities. We pray that we would use this to the building of your kingdom. We pray, Lord, that uh, we would see new life come through salvation into the lives of people. We ask, Lord, that we'd see discipleship, real, real uh, disciples bearing forth the fruits of the Spirit that we've been talking about, that it is bearing fruition in their lives, we pray today. Uh, Lord, we, we remember 9-11. It is very much on our nine minds today. And we just ask that as our nation, you would bring healing as we came together then. So bring our world together, our nation together under you, we pray. We think of the continuing struggle in Ukraine and Russia. And Lord, our heart breaks and at the needless killing that is taking place. We, we ask for an end to the suffering in the world and other war areas we pray spiritual healing to our nation Lord our nation is going through much financially and then um, fires in the west and flooding and we just see Lord wake up the people call them unto you to salvation continue to be with the Williams family and Shirley Lewis with the loss of her son Mark and and Lord, Johnny is very ill and Dawn is very ill, her two other sons. We just ask you, God, to be merciful to them. And you especially give strength to Shirley. I think of Rob and Vicki Dingus. Lord, we continue to lift up Vicki's brother. And thank you, Lord, for what, how he is, uh, you, your hand has been upon him. We think of Amanda Gray and then Betty Nichols as she's recovering from knee surgery and Jerry Lord as uh, Lord he's having this severe back pain needs healing and we pray Lord for that scan on the 20th that it would come back negative we think of Jack Stevenson be with him as he has uh, treatment this week Lord there's many unspoken and we ask you to go to each and every one of them. Remember our Stuttgart and Pine Bluff church plants and all of them around this district. And then, Lord, we anoint uh, Brenda. Lord, any time work is done on our eyes, we just pray for your protection and healing. And we just pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that you bring healing to, to Brenda's eyes, that this goes well, and she'll be able to see clearly. And we just ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Are there any others that would like to be anointed this morning? May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ upon you, may his faithfulness in turn bear forth fruit in your life. Go. In the name of Jesus, amen. Do remember, our offering plates are in the foyer.